Okay, here we are for our, at our Festo capstone project, and we're just taking a walk through um, the testing station, and this is William Schwab. Here's the PLC interface points. Here's our voltage comparator, which measures the uh, parts that we are measuring. Here's the uh, pneumatic air pneumatic distribution system for all the components. Here's our lift carriage assembly, and over here we have the lift actuator assemblies with read switches that tell us what position it's in and this is our actuator assembly now over here is the actual measuring device and what happens is the part comes up here and comes up to this pressure plate and this pressure plate is um, hooked to an analog potentiometer and we get an analog voltage out of this depending on how much the part deflects this pressure plate and that's how we determine whether the part is good or defective and back here is the voltage regulator for the system and in a minute we'll see how the system works okay here's a video for the demonstration of the Festo MPS testing station and what we have here is we have a measurement station that measures the size of two products now the product over here on the left is too small and this is the um, pro proper product size so what we have is we have a lift carriage which lifts it up into the measurement arm. Now the small product doesn't sufficiently engage the measurement arm so it looks like a bad product and it immediately goes down and then gets pushed by the actuator onto the bad track. Now if it's a good part when it goes up it does sufficiently engage the measurement arm and then it gets pushed onto this air slide and it slides onto the next station. So let's take a look at it in action and what happens is we have a little safety zone beam here and a reflector plate and so when you're manually putting it in place, there's like a second and a half delay before the process begins. So there is a delay to move your hand out of the way of the equipment zone. So it goes up, doesn't engage, so it goes right back down and gets pushed off into the bad track. And we can look at that once again. Goes up, doesn't engage, goes back down, goes onto the bad track. Now here's the good part. It'll sufficiently engage the measuring arm and get pushed onto the good track and off to the next station. Here it is with another good part. Goes up and off to the next station. And that's a demonstration of the MPS testing station. Okay, and this is uh, just a calibration for how we determine if we have a valid part or whatnot. And what we have is, right now we have the actuator off, but when we bring the carriage up, when it is in position, and right there it's in position. You can see that the part that's too small, there still is a gap between that and the measurement arm, so it doesn't engage it. Now when we put the proper size part in place, and we bring the measurement arm back up to where it is engaged, you can see that it is directly engaged with the measurement arm, and so it can tell um, that uh, it's a valid part and that's the way we determine that now we do that by just adjusting the um, mounting of the measurement arm itself up here so these mounting screws we can position it up or down and when we position it further up so the small part doesn't engage but the larger part does and that's how we determine our valid part Okay, here we are taking a quick look at the software, and it all starts when the object is detected in the carrier. And from that, we start a one and a half second delay before anything starts so we can get our fingers out of the operational equipment zone. And then we lift the object up to the measurement, and then it takes the measurement for our part. And let's see what happens when we put a couple parts in. And you can see it go through. <coughs> and that doesn't show a lot, but if we go in here and we look at our state diagram, this is basically what happens. We sit at the home position, we wait until we detect something. And then we have a timeout to clear the equipment zone. We go up. Now we make the measurement. Well, we first have a, a time delay to uh, settle out for the measurement and then when we do that we measure it and for a valid part we do the actuator immediately in the air slide 
And then when the actuator is off, we send the lift down. When the lift is all the way down, we reset. Now when we have a defective part, um, we immediately, after we see it's defective, we send the lift down, then we do the actuator. And when the actuator is off, then we return home. <clears throat> and what I'd like to do is also to um, kind of draw up so I know what's happening is a timing diagram. So we get the start, the initial initialization stuff, and then we see an object. And then we get our first timeout for the clear the equipment zone. When that's done, we go over here and we send the lift up. When the lift goes up and is at the up limit, then it turns off. And then we start our measurement delay, the 100 milliseconds. And then after that 100 milliseconds, then we get the strobe. And right there is when we know if or not we have valid data. If we have valid data, then we um, start the counter, and that actuates the um, actuator and the air slide at the same time. Now, the air slide and the actuator have different time delays um, just because that's the way we did it. Anyway, when the actuator is done with its timeout, then it sends the carriage down. When it gets to the finish, the down position, that's the end of the cycle, and we start again. And that's what the software looks like.